All right, everyone, welcome back to the School of Light and another image breakdown. And sitting on the other side of the screen from me is someone who uh, I've developed um, a, a good friendship and relationship with over the years. However, like so many of these, it's the first time we've actually spoken the joys of the internet. This is Ty Palan. Hi, Ty. Hello, Dennis. How are you, mate? How are you? So Ty, Ty, um, Ty is in uh, Denmark at the moment, and we were having a laugh the other day <laughs> that Ty is the greatest light painter in Denmark because there's yeah, so many. <laughs> uh, it, uh, since I don't know any other light painters in Denmark, and it was actually Tom that said it to me, like, "Oh, then you must be the greatest light painter in Denmark." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if there's any other light painters in Denmark out there, get a hold of Ty. Alrighty, so the image that we've got up on the screen now is the photograph we're going to look at with Ty. Now, um, we're going to have a bit of like we do with all of these. We're going to look through Ty's feed. And one of the things that you'll notice is that Ty Palant is a bit of an orb junkie. Uh, he uses one of my tools and it would have been an obvious thing to jump on uh, some of those images. And I do love them. And one of the things, mate, that I really like about your photography, and I always have, is there's this real beautiful, beautiful simplicity around them. And, and so much of your work I look at and, and it reminds me of times that I've gone out where you just look for a really nice landscape under a moonlit sky and you just place your light painting into it. And I think I've, I've always really enjoyed that. And you're someone who takes something I made with my hands and on the other side of the world makes art with it. But so we'll put the orbs aside for now. Um, but I think there's, uh, I think there's something really neat I wanted to, ex to, to explain to people about you. So you are in Denmark at the moment. You are Danish, but you are a. Uh, do they call you a token Brit? Well, you you hang out with the British guys quite a bit over yeah. there, right? So I, I'm probably the foreign guy in the British, uh, the light painting world. To yeah. be honest, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Ty so heads out. Ty heads out with um, with some some people that I'm very close with as well, and and we nearly got to meet a few years ago, but we didn't. Uh, a few few facts about Ty. So he has I just found out has sold. I'm heartbroken. My absolute fantasy vehicle, which was a Defender, to truck around the British. It, it feels awfully royal of you, mate, trucking around the British countryside in a Defender. Yeah, see, it have always been my dream car also. So, of course, when you then go to England, I have, like, you have to then get a Defender. Yeah. Uh, and then get around it. And it was a pleasure. It really was. Yeah. it's it, Look, one day I will, uh, one day I'll own one, and, and I might put a little Thai Palant signature on the back of it. <laughs> Um, so mate, look, you, you, are you definitely fall into category of being an experienced light painter. I mean, I know you started in 2012, which is, which is a long time ago. You produced a lot of work, but what I love about the image that I've chosen, um, is it, it's one of those amazing photographs, Ty, that, that just leaped for me. This is a personal thing. It leaps off the page. There's things that people are going to realize looking through these is there is something I enjoy about symmetry and whether that's the symmetry of an orb or making a making an image feel symmetrical. This does that, but I absolutely love the way that you've lit it. Um, there is, uh, I, you told me you're on your own, right? You made this. Yeah. All by myself. My kind of selfies. That even blows me away more. So look, mate. We'll chat a bit more about your stuff afterwards, but what I would love you to do for the people watching is um, just break it down for us. There's this, where, where is it? First, I think first, where is it? Some challenges. I know there's some challenges getting to this place. Tell us a bit about where it is, some of the challenges, the idea, and then we'll break it down, eh, mate? So, sir, Ty Palen, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. So, like, well, what I normally do, because I do like hiking at the same time, so I hike many times in the daytime and find locations. Yeah. And this one here down in Wales, where it's from, from Lambaris, uh, is an old quarry. And it's up on this whole mountain. So I've been up there, there's a small factory, uh, like holes and all this. And this is then one of them. Um, and you can actually see in the bottom of that picture, that's all the old saws where they're chopping off uh, ah. the slates. Um, so yeah, then this one here, I've, I've walked up the mountain in 
think on the way at sunset because I knew I wanted to be up there and not wait too long. Yeah. And then I just wanted to do something in this location. Didn't know exactly what. Yeah. And, and because many times I just know the location and then I said just take it from there. Yeah. Um, where many other people do have a plan and I kind of have a plan, but not really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. So, uh, yeah, this shot here then I wanted to get, because it's a very, very deep building, uh, so very, yeah. very long. Yeah. And I wanted to get that into the picture. Um, yeah. And then I started to just take some test shots, place it, and then uh, I just thought, you know what? I want to do a backlit uh, yeah. self-portrait of myself there. Um, so I started to then basically try it out, where far back in the red light, I used this uh, the Phoenix light as this one here. Yeah, where, nice. Um, so I placed that far, far back, just laying on one of the saws there and just lighting up. Yep. And then further ahead, I put um, just a loom cube. Just a loom yeah, cube. wicked. Yeah, 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 yeah. How crazy are those things? They're so good. And then just use foil Beautiful. and then Beautiful. put it around. Yes. And then <laughs> I, I placed that one on, on a monopod that I have. Yep. So then give the blue light. And yep. then um, <clears throat> I placed myself further over, so of course I could see the camera in the other end, so I could see where I was standing. Ah, so you're so facing? Are you you you're facing the camera? Yeah. Yeah, wicked. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I think I did two or three shots, and then I yeah. found out that actually, if I put my hands up like a V, then I could actually make it fit into the trusses. Because that my legs, the light was coming through, but of course the arms yeah. weren't. Because there's no, there's no roof on that building anymore. But and then yeah, that was kind of it. It was it was very simple, but yeah, very very relaxing. Because yeah. So as you said, I was all by myself here, yeah, and I've actually done that a lot because yeah. I use it to de-stress and then just spend its amount of hours just fooling around with some light in the dark. Um, so there's no, some, yeah, that's yeah, it, it it there's something really beautiful, eh, mate, about being on your own sometimes. For for the first for the first six years of my light painting, I was always on my own. And now I tend to always be with someone else. But there is some and, and this place in Wales, this this slate mine, it's really remote, eh? Like it's a lot, it's it's right out of the way, isn't it? Yeah, so like it's it's close to Lamberry's but it's a small hike to get up there. And this yeah. one here is, these are like uh, almost 500 meters above sea level. So, Whoa, yeah. And it, it's very steep, this yeah. mountain, um, because that they have just chopped out. So it's like steps all the way through the mountain. Yeah, and the steps um, are slate. The steps are slate, aren't they? So it yeah. would be slippery as anything if it got wet. And actually, when I went up here, uh, I did some other shots in the area also. I didn't use, but I had a drone with me there also. And that was at that time a Phantom 4. So I had a huge backpack just for that. Yeah. That I put on my stomach and then all the light painting tools on my back. Yeah. And then they'll just hang up to the top there. Um, so, uh, yeah, never go down on equipment. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me the, the um, because I think something that, I think something that, you know, we were referring to before about the conversation I had with Tom Hill the other day, you know, and how he's just a mad scientist. Literally, he's a physicist. And his work is this highly technical things. And, and I'm, I'm with you. I listen to these guys like him and, and, and uh, Frodo. And they, they go, oh, yeah, well, I did this thing. And mm. my head, I just sit there and go, what the, that, that's crazy. And I, for, 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 for a lot of your work, uh, and, and in particular, this image. And, and I personally believe that when you pair it all back, when you just go back to the basics and you just create something that is clean and simple, you know, the old saying that less is more. Mm, yeah. And sometimes just putting a nice, simple orb into a landscape or doing a nice, simple backlit, Im backlit image like this can really pop. I think it can be really beautiful, you know. Yeah, it's this one with with the 
guys in England after I met them, they opened my like mind for light painting even more. Yeah. And that was where I've, I've never did uh, backlit uh, photos of myself yeah. uh, before I actually met them because I think I think one of the first one that did it where I was just the model was Tim. Yeah. Um, and then you'll just just what I then always start to think because I like to be by myself with some of these things. Not that I love to be out with the guys really a lot. Yeah. But then I always start to think, how do I do this picture all by myself? Yeah. And then get that thing around. And that sometimes are very frustrating and other because you can't get it to work. But yeah. uh, other times it's so nice when you get it to work. Yeah. It have then also meant when I was out with the guys, which we've been many times, we, we always, of course, help each other. Yes. I found it so hard to say, oh, uh, I don't know what I want you to do because I'm, yeah. I'm always <laughs> doing it by myself. So always felt like a little bit unpolite by saying, oh, yeah. I don't really need your help. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Fair call. But then, Fair call. But then just the ideas that we then share with each other, oh, could you then add this into the picture? So yeah. that really helped me to expand yeah. the whole life in the world. From, um, when you, um, so here's something I, I, I always ask, I always ask you, well, the first thing I want to mention is that you, you took this image with a Nikon D7000 and basically a kit lens. Um, and what I'll do is I don't normally do this with these pics, but on the screen now I'll put up the, the EXIF data. So the camera, how long the exposure was and all that sort of thing. And one of the things that anyone watching should really take note of is that there's nothing super fancy about this camera gear. There's nothing, nothing super fancy about, it's a 60 second exposure at F5.6 ISO 200. There's no crazy high ISO settings or anything. And, and what I really enjoy about that tie and, and what I love people realizing is that basically any camera with any kit lens can do this sort of image, eh? Like it, yeah. it's, what, what matters is the idea, right? But also, yeah. also what matters, I think more importantly in most of these photographs is where it is and the effort that it's taken to get there on your own, right? So my question for you is, as someone who paints, light paints a lot on your own, if you could give some advice, mate, to someone who's going to be going out on their own to create light painting images, especially, you know, if you look at this photograph, you know, this doesn't look like as, you know, if, you, if you're not careful, shit is going to get real, right, in here. What sort of advice can you give to someone, not just about, you know, ob obviously don't walk on cliffs or, you know, do handstands above gl the glass, but what what bit of advice around the taking of the photographs can you give someone who goes out on their own? Like, have, if, when you do go out on your own, always let somebody know that yeah. where you're going. So okay. if something happens yeah. and you don't come back or something, because... Yeah, as you say, if, if I tripped over on one of those soles and broke my ankle, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I had to wait for quite a long time because there don't come a lot of people up there. Yeah. Um, and you don't always have connection on your phone. Um, I think yeah, totally. you have the inland barriers, but still. Um, else when you're by yourself, I've, I've, I think there's one thing that you actually don't talk that much or oh, in the light painting. That is uh, the old being scared in the dark kind of thing. Yeah. Where, because of course it happens that sometimes the mood just changes. Yeah, man. And actually I had a primary school teacher where I always remember what she said because she liked to walk in the forest in the dark. <sighs> and then we was like, isn't it scary? And said, no, because there's nobody out there because who's that stupid to be out there in the middle of the night? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, nobody's ever there. So yeah, my biggest fear many times is actually if somebody sees me doing light painting and don't understand what is going on. Yes. So also if I am in a area where I've been up in uh, Northern England, where there was somebody then wild camping and oh. then all of a sudden I come out from the dark and then, because then I go over to tell them that I'm going to put some lights up over here. So they don't all of a sudden. Yes. Me up. Yeah, um, you get scared. Um, but they, of course, look very strange at you. Like, what, what are you doing here in the middle of the night? Yeah, so, that's, a, that's really, that's a great piece of advice, actually. 
because you don't make any noise when you're there by yourself. Like, no. of course, you sometimes talk to yourself, but then <laughs> it's just because I'm a weirdo. But <laughs> um, so that one is it's quite, um, and then just enjoy it. I have like, of course, that you can just just be quiet in some way and just all alone and just relax in some way and just yeah. There's no stress, just take your time when you go through and because at the same time uh, for every 10th picture, like there's 10 pictures before yeah. you take a good one probably. Yeah. And then just not get frustrated. Um, yeah. It's okay. okay. It's okay to take time, eh? Yeah, it's, I find it very important yeah. uh, to do it and actually just enjoy it. Sometimes you then out and then you don't get anything really good, but you've still got out. And yeah. it's it's just nice to be away from the daily oh. nightmares all the time. So yeah, because um, yeah, the phone doesn't ring in the middle of the night normally. No, <laughs> you know something, mate. So so I'll tell you. I, there's a there's a a bunch of things that I've been thinking about as I've been looking at this photograph that 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 I will share share with you and with the people watching is. One of the things that we hesitate to do when we're light painting is, or one of the bad habits is to light a scene from directly behind the camera. You always want to be at an angle to give a scene shape. But one of the amazing things about backlighting is that just by the nature of the fact that the light is coming directly towards the camera, you get those really nice bold shadows that you get here. So all this texture in the wall, all the, the the texture of the machinery on the ground, the 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 you know the roof and all of that, you simply just wouldn't um, you don't get that any other way by the, mm. than backlighting. But here's another thing, and I uh, um, I've I've done a tutorial on this at the School of Light about complementary colours by adding the blue to the red, the red pops, uh, and and I think. Whether, whether you've done that consciously or unconsciously, um, it just, uh, Troy Paver, who, who uh, I haven't, well, it's irrelevant whether I have or I haven't because, <laughs> but Troy Paver, I've done an image breakdown with him and he, he says red is just add red. When you want an image to pop, add some red. <laughs> <laughs> and it always, yeah, and it works, you know. I, I do, I do look after to do the contrast colors yeah, because they it. do work so perfectly together like yeah. you can sometimes of course plain but it doesn't pop in the same way and no. there's just some overpower rules in some way that just works yep and that That's one it. there yeah of course here with because that these walls are made out of slate also yeah uh, so they, and they just shine like, yeah, and they're dark. They 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 are this incredible. I've never been there, Slate, but I've seen photos yeah. from this place, and yeah, you get that incredible deep blackness or darkness of it, but they shine. It's reflective. Yeah. <sighs> so it, it it looks really really good. I and mean, it's almost hard to take a bad picture of there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I've seen. It's all right. I've seen. Uh, I've seen some shockers from up there. We won't talk about who, but uh, yeah. Oh, I have some. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, look. Um, for the idea of keeping these short, I'll kind of wrap up. But it's just lovely to sit down and talk to you. And I really, I'm, I'm so pleased that we managed to talk about this image and share this with people because I think what it will do. You know, there's so many of these photographs that we look at. Uh, from these crazy madmen that are just so complex and technical and and like so much of your photography which i'll be encouraging people to go and hang out on your instagram and and, and have a look at your because not only are you a really really nice light painter mate but your general landscape photography is gorgeous i i, I always <laughs> love it yeah you know, always love it when your work pops up in my feed because it's so varied uh and and it makes me want to go to the places you're at um <laughs> But I think things for people to take away from this is, you know, don't stress too much about gear. Less is more. Um, and uh, if you're ever in Wales, go find a slate mine. Yeah, plenty of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I've covered it all there. Yeah, it's, it's uh, oh, there's a, here's, a, here's a really nice story, but kind of sad is um, 
Ty Pallant hangs out with the uh, those other mad English men, and they actually met at uh, at a workshop that I had organised uh, in the middle of England, but didn't actually make it to. But the <laughs> but the guys they kept the org- the meetup, so everyone who had organised to be there uh, got got together and went and met, and these beautiful friendships have come from it. Eh? It's um, yeah. Oh, it have been amazing since and. Uh, that that was where it kicked off for me with the light painting. That was yeah. from that meeting and with meeting all the guys there. Yeah. And then were that kind to take me in. That's uh, wonderful. Even though uh, I'm a stubborn Danish guy, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was really really nice, and I appreciate that so much. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was good. We'll mate, we'll get over to the, we'll organize a big beast Europe meetup at some stage, and yeah. you and I'll drink tea together and drive around in your. <laughs> uh, new wagon <laughs> yeah <laughs> mate thank you so much for joining us at the school of light Ty. and uh thank and, you very much yeah and and i hope all is well in the beautiful denmark and and we'll see you again soon and thanks everyone for joining us again at the school of light for another image breakdown i hope that uh well i know you will be you know just um inspired by this gorgeous photograph and all of ty's work thank you so much mate thank you very much it was an honor to be part of it beautiful peace everyone Thanks, I'll see you again next time. I hope you enjoyed this visit to the School of Light. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding videos all the time. Head over to the Light Painting Tool Shop at the website. There's a huge array of tools I've made there for you to take on your light painting journey. Peace.